As you can see here, I'm getting ready to sand the leading edge to be flush with the top of this rib, and the spar will also be sanded down if necessary to uh, be flush with the uh, ribs as well, and that will prepare it for the sheeting for the bottom of the wing. And I'll do the same for the whole leading edge, leading up to the root of the wing which will join with the center section. I'll sand that down on all these surfaces as well and make that flush with all the ribs throughout here. So that means if this needs to be sanded down, which, which it does because it's raised a little bit here, I'll have to do that. And that will finish up the preparation for sheeting the bottom of the wing. When you're sanding the leading edge to be flush with the rib, you want to look down the edge uh, such as I'm showing here with the camera angle. So you want to be looking down this edge along the whole uh, leading edge so you can see if there's any high spots as you're sanding it. And if you have an area with the rib that it seems to be sanding below it, then you might want to actually fill in around the rib up here to meet with the leading edge instead of sanding down to it because what's going to happen is you're going to have a uneven leading edge surface where if a few of the ribs don't meet up then fill up, build up the rib itself to meet with the leading edge instead of trying to sand down uh, because you could end up with surfaces that are high and low. When it comes to sanding, the final sanding of a wing, you've got to take into consideration using several different types of sanding blocks from a small size. This one has an aggressive 60 grit on it <coughs> and that's useful for areas where you've got the harder woods like your basswood or your plywoods such as these uh, rails for the landing gear. And then I go to my larger faced uh, sanding block, which is just a big, big piece of MDF, quarter inch uh, thick, uh, 3 eighths, sorry. And that has uh, an 80 grit on it. That's going to be useful for going across many ribs at a time, so you're, so you're always keeping the surfaces uh, even and flush with one another. Uh, if you just did one rib, perhaps like this, this one could be a little higher or you could end up having a valley that you sand into it. But when you're doing a larger surface area, you're certainly keeping uh, that to a minimum when you use a larger sanding block such as this. And finally, just remember that when you do sand uh, something like ribs like this, that you never want to go across because the ribs could get caught if they're a little high and you could snap it or break it off when you go in that direction. You always want to go with the long uh, axis of the rib in this way from the leading edge to the trailing edge or leading, trailing edge to leading edge. When you do something close to the trailing edge where you've already created uh, an angled surface here to meet up with the uh, other sheeting that's going to lay on top of that, you want to be careful when you get close to that that you're not sanding uh, that down anymore. So you want to keep your your sanding on the these surfaces of the ribs and the uh, spars and the leading edge itself. So you're you're trying to line up everything and keep it all flush and uh, always check down along the edge along the edge of your surfaces like this. You want to see if that that line, that plane that you're looking at, is staying smooth and consistent. If, if 
some of the ribs look a little high and you just cannot sand enough of this down then don't. You're better off feathering some material that you glue on top of the rib here and feathering that into this other surface to meet it. That might have happened because the spar did not uh, get low enough in here and it was higher over here. Um, that can happen. Um, you're better off trying to adjust the other surfaces to it if it's really drastic. I thought I would show a demonstration of sanding the wing so you can see exactly which directions you should be sanding in and exactly how to do it. So I'm going to take this large sanding block, which is a big piece of MDF that I cut out and then I put a piece of sand paper on the other side with adhesive and you always want to be going in this direction never go across you never want to go across because you could make indentations this way you're with a large sanding block such as this you're covering a larger surface area and you're uh, eliminating the possibility of creating a indentation or a dent if you use the smaller sanding block, let's say if, if it was only like this big. This larger piece gives you a larger surface area and now you go across like this and I'll show you. You only want to sand to the ends of your ribs here. You don't want to go past here because we if you do like I did here, uh, there was a bevel that was there was a bevel sanded on here on the edge of this balsa sheeting and we don't want to uh, change that angle so we just want to go as far as the end of the of the ribs go across the spar like this and then you come around the weight of the sanding block should be enough as you're sliding it to smooth it out I'm using about a uh, hundred and 20 grit sandpaper. I don't want to use anything more aggressive than that. Uh, these, you know, these ribs are thin, and you'll soon quickly, you'll see quickly that it really starts to smooth it out and, and make everything flush. So, just apply a little bit of pressure and take your time, and just move down to the next set of ribs like this. And if you have any real high spots, such as right here, I still have a little bit of. of of material I can feel it's above the ribs it might be a little tricky to use the big sanding block I would just take my small sanding block and just go ahead and hit that until it's smoothed out and flush with the rib or pretty close so that when I take my bigger sanding block and go over that area I'm not having to try and remove material from this just to become flush with that because I could be hitting it somewhere along here and that could uh, change the shape of the airfoil and we don't want to do that. So you're going to have to just take your time and feel. You really do have to feel with the sanding block. And if something feels a little high, like maybe this servo rail here to mount the servo, you might want to just take your little sanding block and just hit that a few times to bring that down so that when you take the big block, everything is pretty close so it only takes a few passes smooth everything out. We're not looking to, to remove a ton of material with this large sanding block. We're just using it to make everything uniform and smooth and flush. So to sum up, use a large sanding block to do the whole wing and use a smaller block to do areas such as the harder wood supplies that may have a, a a large amount of material to, to take off and you can use two surfaces like this to whittle that, to sand that down and then what you're going to do is, is then hit it with the larger block after you've done that to then blend everything into the whole wing and when that's finished you want to go back over the whole wing and check all of your joints and make sure that there's adequate glue and make sure that they are uh, locked in place and uh, secure. So again, just use your different size 
sanding blocks depending on what you've got to sand out of the wing. Now if you don't have a servo bay with uh, such as this or you don't have gear in the wing then obviously you don't have to worry about that but otherwise um, even if you don't you're going to use a large sanding block like this and you're going to use it uh, like I said along the long axis and from the leading edge to the trailing edge never from one end of the wing to the other across the ribs. You want to be going in the same direction to always be mindful of, of keeping those from getting damaged. So I hope that gives you an idea of how to use it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, you can check me out on my blog and I'm uh, happy to answer your questions.